which is part of our ancient ecology and part of our symbiotic origins, primates and humans as well, so formed a relationship with fruit. And fruit, uh, most people think of fruit as something to eat, maybe it's something healthy to eat, but what everybody seems to have forgotten, unless you speak to the botanists and people who work much more with plants, fruit's something extraordinarily unique. It's, it's what we would call a developmental environment. It's kind of similar to the mammalian uterus, the mammalian, the mammalian womb, and it's evolved and designed to build a whole new generation, and also it's loaded with hormones to read the plant DNA very differently. And what happens if you form a very close relationship with a safe fruit, the developmental environment, you get a very, very unusual outcome. You have a, a plant-animal hybrid, and the hormones in the fruit effectively begin reading the mammalian DNA very differently. And you don't, you don't end up with a plant, but you end up with something that's a very different mammal. And we have unique traits. Everybody's puzzled by some of our traits. Our supposed intelligence, our extremely large brain with its very advanced architecture. And what I think happened is the fruit shaped all of that. And then you end up with a separation, a loss of the fruit. And without the hormones from the fruit shaping and sculpting this unique structure, uh, our neural system begins to revert. It begins to revert back to a more primitive mammalian type. And it's well understood our, our neural system was expanding very rapidly, very mysteriously. Some people suggest it tripled in size in about two million years, which, which is extraordinary. Then it suddenly stopped expanding and it's been shrinking ever since. Say fruit is, is, a, is a very unique um, organ really. It's, it's unlike many things we eat, or in fact, unlike many things that many animals eat, it's, um, it's the sex organ of the plant. It's a flowering plant sex organ, and it's the environment where the next generation of plants develop. And the relationship became very close. The fruit expanded, it was part of the plant's mechanism for dispersing seeds, so you ended up with the, the plants competing with each other, they wanted, uh, they wanted the seed dissemination, so they were effectively tempting many animals, but primates included, to take away the seeds. So you had an expansion of what is effectively the plant's ovary. It swells up, it's loaded with hormones, it's loaded with chemicals to make you feel good, it's nutritious. And the closer you get in that relationship, you end up with, with what's called a symbiotic relationship where the lines begin to blur between one species and the other. And the idea that humans evolved autonomously goes out the window. It, it, it turns out that our, a lot of our complex traits have been shaped and sculpted by the chemistry of the plants. It's not locked in our DNA. It's not something we can do. So you end up with a situation where our consciousness system, our neural system, and much of our physiology becomes entirely dependent on the plant, particularly the fruit. As we separated from our natural environment, our natural forest <coughs> environment, which you claim in your book, this is where we used to live, and what, what, what happens? Well, it's part speculation. There's good evidence we lived there. It suits our physiology. Um, the non-seasonal tropics are where it's it's warm all year round. It can rain all year round and there's fruit all year round. It's not like the seasonal tropics, which is what perhaps we've been told more about. There's a, there's a sort of niche within that where it's perpetually non-seasonal and it's, it's there's fruit available all the time. Well, that's the only place this could happen. Again, it suits our physiology very well. However, if you develop a relationship and it goes on for millions of years and you become very closely entangled and codependent, but if you get a, a significant or a severe change in climate, a, a drying period, forests, even the tropical forests, can shrink and virtually disappear. And there's certainly some evidence that there was a pretty severe drying roughly 200 to 250,000 years ago. And that correlates quite well with the end of this rapid expansion in our neural system. And what I proposed is that the expansion and all the cool features that we like to think we have were part of this relationship, part of this symbi symbiotic relationship. So if you end up with a, a phase where the forest shrinks, perhaps virtually disappears, then you end up having to survive, which clearly we were capable of. Courtesy of the forest, we had a big intelligent brain. Sure, we could survive, but the chemistry, the very unique, incredibly rich chemistry that was driving this process is vanished. So what you'd expect, or what I would expect, is the mechanism would stall. 
will lo and behold the expansion stalled and it began to shrink and we ended up having to survive with an ecology and a diet and a biochemistry that could no way support this incredibly unique phenomena and and our neural system began to contract, it began to revert to type and because there's a difference between one side of the brain and the other, genetically they're slightly different, it turns out one side slightly more susceptible to this process than the other. Could have been either side, turns out it looks like it's the left side and it's reverting to primitive type much more quickly and we've ended up with a relatively primitive neural system, at least one half of it, and it's now taken charge, it's now running the show. So. Uh, we kid ourselves we're an advanced species, in fact we're becoming rapidly a very primitive species in terms of our function, things like aggression and hierarchy and competition, they're all very common traits, typical mammalian traits, the traits that were much more unique like profound sense of empathy and compassion and a lot of the very high cognitive function and a lot of other unique abilities they have nothing to do with the primitive mammalian brain. They had something to do with this, with this unique symbiosis. And we still have relics of that locked in our right hemisphere if we can get at them.